Today we're speaking with Marco, the head of the, so we say, the CEO of Race. No, South no, Africa. no, no, no CEO. <laughs> I'm a humble worker. I'm the owner of the business. No CEOs. We're not a fancy company. Just a simple business. Today we're going to be speaking to Marco specifically about the 812 Superfast in Lago package. And I want to ask you, <laughs> 18 that are going to be sold worldwide. How did you manage to secure two build slots? Um, there's two aspects of it. One is the fact that, I'm, that I have a very close relationship with the owners of Novitech and I knew that the bills were coming. So I kind of like lined it up and said, look, I have to have at least one and I potentially have a second guy who's also uh, in, interested. Basically, the, the two that are here are going to the two guys who have the two 488 in Lagos, okay. of which one has also got the F12 in Lagos. Yeah. So he's lining up all there in Lagos. So it was kind of natural that a person that has invested so much in my brand and in Novitech's brand would have access to it and one of his close uh, friends and partners who has the 488 and Lago already wanted to also continue their connection. Okay. So uh, it was due to their loyalty uh, and also uh, near Novitech with such a close relationship we built a lot of special cars for them. We've been a, a big source of marketing material for them in the past and they, they enjoy our style and the, the spin that we put on their cars. So um, it, was, it was also, you know, yeah, many factors. Many factors okay. led to that, but we are hugely blessed. I mean, America gets two. Wow. The rest of the world uh, will get each important uh, distribution point of theirs will get one, you know, in the best case scenario, yeah. get one. Wow. Uh, America will get two. Okay. America now has just finished building their first one, that uh, bronze one, okay. that was shown at Monterey yeah. Car Week last week. Okay. Obviously, it's not just put on a body kit. Like, what's what's the most difficult part of the whole uh, Inlago project? I think the most difficult is the rear quarters. Yeah. Because the problem with the rear quarters is that you have to cut. So the most difficult is actually the rear quarter cutting the shell to accommodate the wider body, and then gluing and bonding it on in this area. The, the, the mating between the original shell and the new carbon panel is the challenge and the lineup that goes in the, with everything else. The front end of the car it bolts on fairly easily. It's the back end and the lineup that all these leading edges and corners all flow into each other. That this line, this corner, this line, this point here, that all these points match and flow and that when you because this is glued down. Once it's glued down, the step needs to be filled and flowed, and all this line work needs to work into each other. Okay. What is the most expensive build that race has ever done? I'm, I'm guessing this is probably up there with one I mean, of the most this, expensive. This and the Enlargo, or they call it overdose Rolls Royce. Yeah. Also, massive builds. The expense comes in just on the sheer volume of of actual componentry. Yeah. All these components are carbon, they are primed in matte black because they are uh, laid in opposing uh, sheets. They're not hand laid in straight pattern to be exposed. They're laid for structural strength and rigidity and hence they are, are then uh, coated with a matte primer. But the sheer volume of this, and then there's also what you don't see, which is the suspension. These are mad, mad special wheels built yeah. by Vossen forged one-piece monoblock wheels that are specifically built for this project and unique to the Enlago. There's the whole exhaust system, which you don't see all of it, but there's the front section, the central section that hasn't arrived yet, the silencer boxes, um, there's all the engine electronics, uh, the ECUs, the gearbox ECU, uh, and then some interior touches. There's just, it's complete. There's a lot. And this is the full, full spec option of the Enlago. You can spec this less, okay. where even the exposed sections of carbon would be done in non-exposed carbon, so the, the, the non-perfectly laid carbon. Yeah. But here we ticked every single box, so everything that can be. You could, for example, have all these additional aero parts in the matte, non-exposed carbon variant, which is ready for painting. But everything that we could have in exposed carbon we've taken the exposed carbon option. So okay. if you look already on the car, the rear diffuser, the whole rear the exhaust surrounds, everything is already in Novitex exposed carbon. The whole front end is all already exposed wow. carbon. There's all the sections that go inside here to fill this gap exposed. There's the whole deck, the extender. There's the big top wing, which 
I'm going to try and find it. I don't know where the boys have put the top wing. I think we put it in safekeeping. There's a massive wing. It's also in exposed carbon. Okay. Would you do this to your own A12? Of course. Of course. This is what people don't get is that race is not a business that was built to make money. Mm. This is not a business that was put together because I needed to chase an industry or chase. I've been doing this for 20 years to my own things. Wow. All my cars are tuned. All my stuff is chopped. All my stuff is built like this. I'll do this blindfolded to my own things all day because one, I know what I'm doing and two, the quality is there. Yeah. The finished product, you can see the money, you can feel it, it's right. Yeah. So people, I, I get this kind of question often that it's easy to do it to other people's Ferraris, but yeah. this is joking. The first Liberty 488 was my own car, yeah. 458, the white one. That was my car and that was a harder chop and a more aggressive style and package than this yeah. is. Many of the big leading projects, the 4x4 squared that we built, those are cars that I built first and take all the risk on my own stuff yeah. and then sell it on. I can't, can't afford to keep all these cars. I'd love to be able to own every single one by myself, but it's not physically possible. Yeah. Many of these projects, I've also gone in with the customer saying, right, I'll fund the kit, you can put the car in. If you don't like it, I'll buy you out. If I don't like it, I'll buy you out or vice yeah. versa, or whatever we want to do. Many times, it's... The, the fact I'm not doing it solely to all my own cars because yeah. I don't have the financial capability to yeah. do it all and keep them all. But this business is built on the fact that I was doing it first on my own things and people said, shit, I like that. Can I also have it? Yeah. And that's how it, my business is built. This is not a money uh, making venture. Uh, this is built on the right principles. So it's, I'm, it's definitely passion. It's, it's what fuels you the most. Yes, it's, it's built on the right principles and on things that are, that are real. As in, I, we know what we're doing, I love what I'm doing, and it's built properly. This car, when it's finished, is going to be a work of art, and I'm going to be proud of it, I'm going to love it. This is, I love what I see. Yeah. Well, Speaking of that, when do you think we will uh, see the finished product? In the next the... two to three weeks it will be done. The painting process is really, really laborious. It's going to be hard to color match. You obviously don't want to blend here and here, so yeah. we're just going to respray practically the whole side of the car. Spray it once, and we'll... I've got a gut feel like I ended up doing with the with the F12, we just respray the whole car. Okay. For the sake of just not having any sort of discrepancy in the uniformity of the of the blends, we ended up painting the whole car and I've got a feeling. What's the limitations or the problems with painting the whole car? Gotta take the, the glued in quarters out. We've got to cut the rear window out because it's glued in floating. There's a lot of technical issues that are that that, that are gonna hurt us. Yeah. Well not hurt us, add time and add cost to the build, but I just, I'm not going to cut corners. We're going to build it properly. And this is a particular color. We want to look at it when we've done the first layer of paint and see what decision we make. Awesome. Now, of course, um, Novitech and Liberty Walk, they're not the same. Obviously, they've, they've got the differences. But if you had to choose, which, which body kit would you, would you put on yours? You know, they both got their identity and the style. My personal style is obviously Novitech, an integrated, flush, uh, complete project. People also don't understand that Liberty Walk's concept is to replicate a GT3 race car on the road. Okay. It is not a design concept like Enlargo is. Yeah. They have this rough, rugged, ready GT3 style. When we applied the tire stickers and Kato was here from Liberty Walk and we're putting these perfect tire stickers, they don't like that. Yeah. They want that stencil with the spray, okay. with the overspray and the roughness. Yeah. He's even commented that my builds are too clean and too precise. Wow. They wanted to have that rough and rugged Japanese street race car yeah. feel. That is not the case on a car that's going to end up having a 14 million rand finished price tag. Yeah. So, and Gosh. Novitech uh, costs 10 times Liberty Walk. Yeah. So uh, they're not in the same place. Not in the same place. Right, Marco, thank you so much for taking time out of your very busy, uh, busy schedule to come talk with no us. Problem. Thank you guys yeah. for coming and, and uh, taking your time too.